In this part, you'll be learning why these groups, when they're placed next to the benzene ring, they are considered electron donating, activating, and auto para directing for the next substituent. So here you see a drawing of a phenol molecule, right? And we notice that oxygen should have two lone pairs on itself because it's coming from group six in the periodic table. With lone pairs here, this lone pair, the p orbital here, overlap with the pi of the orbital of the benzene ring. Now, it looks like this. The model here represents this phenol. You see, oxygen being in red. The one in black are the carbon atoms. The one in white is the hydrogen. So, the lone pairs here are not visible, but you can see my fingers, they are here. And if I position it this way, what you realize is, it is upright, right? And we notice that inside this plane here of the benzene ring is actually the p orbitals above and below it. So there's an orbital overlap between the lone pair on this oxygen atom and the pi orbitals inside the benzene ring. They are just nice at the right, at the right structure, okay? So because of this overlap, these electrons here could be moved into the ring. Let me just draw an arrow for you. Right. Electron pair go to the next bond, and you have to break this pi bond here because carbon can't take more than eight electrons in its outermost shell. So you push it to the next part, or you can push it to this carbon here. All right. Let me draw it better for you. You can push to this carbon, and what you see is this structure. Negative with lone pair on the first carbon and then double bond, oxygen, hydrogen. Now, oxygen has three bonds around it, it must take a positive charge. All right, I can continue to push these electrons over, and this pi bond can move up. Pardon, lone pair can push down further, so I'll push this lone pair down. That means this pi bond could give way and push to this carbon. All right, and what you get, the next structure would be this carbon taking the negative charge with the lone pair, pi bond on the left, pi bond on the right, double bond O, H stay unchanged, okay, and I do it one more time. I push to the right side, and this pi bond break and go towards this, uh, this uh, carbon here, and Lone pair, negative charge. Okay. And what you realize is something very interesting. At any part of time, you notice the auto here, auto position, and the power position would gain some negative charge. And the power and the meta position, they do not get any charge. What it means is the auto position and the power positions are relatively having more electron density than the meta position. And we know that. If I'm going to push another electrophile to a phenol, electrophile wants electron, it would love to go to the place, the region, the site with most electron density, and it would prefer to go to either the ortho or the para. It would not go to the meta because it doesn't have much more electron density compared to the rest. So again, all these are relative, and by now, I hope you know how to explain why this is auto para directing for the phenol group. Now, why is it activating? Very simple, compared to before, before I draw this structure here, the ring has gained some negative charge, which means electron density has increased. When electron density increases, it attracts more electrophile, and hence the ring is activated. Remember, benzene ring undergoes what kind of reaction? Electrophilic substitution. And the driving force of this is the amount of electron density within the benzene ring. So these two substituents, the amine group and the tertiary amine group, they both work the same way because you have lone pair onto this heteroatom that will overlap with the pi orbital of the benzene ring in the same manner. When you draw it out, just a quick one. And H2 lone pair that can be pushed down. You see? 
similar to what I did. And the other form of amine, when you have N, R, R, the alkyl group, again, lone pair, pushed and pushed into the ring.